Good morning. My name is Shivani Madan. What's your name? Good morning. My name is Riddhi. What's your name? Good morning. My name is Sachin Shatterjee. Okay. So Riddhi, you are 26B9A and Sachin, you are 26A9E. Uh, Riddhi, I would like to know what are your strengths and uh, how would you describe about yourself? Um, I like to describe myself as having twin personalities because I feel that my friends know me as their crazy and forgetful buddy while most of my teachers say I'm shy and introverted and I consider my academics to be my top priority and uh, right from a very young age I've made sure that none of my passions and other interests can interfere with that and I've always maintained a very uh, straight focus. What are your favourite subjects? Uh, I am very fond of all languages and so literature is, I, it's very dear to me because um, it feels like I can finally put my interest in reading to a good use and productive use. That's interesting. What genre of books do you read? I'm a voracious reader so I don't have a very particular genre but um, of course nowadays I prefer reading uh, fantasy and fiction and uh, crime writings. Um, um, such it, exams are around the corner, right? So your anxiety is also natural and I know most of the students are very uh, stressed these days. I would like to know what's your opinion and what do you do to uh, combat the exam stress? I think the, the anxiety and the stress and the push to do well for all students is, is a natural thing. Everybody wants to do well, everybody wants to come top of the class. But stress, stress really shouldn't get to you. So I have come up with uh, techniques over the years, I've accumulated them. Mainly, I think, um, performing music. Uh, I play tennis very regularly, so you know, hitting a ball really hard across the court is a very good measure for getting getting stress away. So I think also, taking, taking time off is actually a very non-intuitive way of uh, doing better for exams because your mind is away from exams, playing with your pets, playing right. with your family. But do you also feel the peer, peer, peer pressure and do you feel that you know you are in that same rat race of competition? Well, I personally I don't feel it because I understand that everybody is different, everybody has their own talents. But I think generally with the people, the students around me, I guess that there is this race, rat race. So that's a healthy competition? It's, it's healthy competition. Uh, fine, we start with the second task which is the topic presentation. Yes, Riddhi, what is your topic? Uh, so the theme I've chosen today is money and my topic mm -hmm. is how much for a smile. Alright, so after she has opened on her topic, you are going to ask, him one quest ask her one question and then a couple of questions will be asked by me. Yes. Uh, to begin with, I would like to say a couple of lines actually that I think sums up perfectly what my perception of money is. Wealth is the ability to fully experience life. Wealth is the reason behind each and every strife. The idealists say money can't buy love, but those who think they know better say money stands above. The necessary evil that we call money has been dramatically described as power, freedom, strength, a cushion, the root of all evils and the sum of all blessings. Oscar Wilde, one of the most famous writers and poets of all time, once said with brutal honesty, but when I was young, I thought that money ran the world. But now that I have grown up, I know that it does. Money has become a necessity not just for life, but for a respectful life. A life with some assortment of dignity. It has become the reason for our motivation, the basis of all our decisions. In simple terms, the more of it one has, the more one wants. But with great power comes great responsibility. Responsibility such that most of us can't handle it. Overwhelmed by its strength, fascinated by the endless possibilities, and excited by the extent of its control, money can completely change a person's behavior, perception, priorities, and even relationships. And so caught up in the race to always come out ahead, we are driven to work beyond our limits, even if it is to earn money that we don't really need. But money can provide us with fancy cars, houses, phones, or whatever else that may catch our fancy. But what it can't provide is the feeling of belonging, satisfaction, and humanity. Why is it that ever so often we hear stories of wealthy socialites 
giving away all their hard-earned money back to society? Why is it that reading to the elderly brings a smile to their faces, but even the many zeros on their paychecks can't? Why is it that they would rather spend a few hours at an orphanage than do any more shopping? Why is it that we get sheer happiness out of things that we then look back on and feel we could have done even when we had nothing? I feel it is truly they who have actually had it all, done it all, and seen it all, who can say that money can buy a lot of things that help make our life better, but it is not the only thing needed to bring a little more happiness into this world. And so, I believe that the perfect situation in life is to have money in your hand, logic in your head, and humanity in your heart. Okay, so if you can ask her a question. There is this age-old question, I, uh, obviously while researching about the topic, must have come across it. Would you rather have money or would you rather be happy? I think it would be foolish if I didn't accept that today's world is run on money. But um, I feel that I would, um, I think money can buy us luxury, it can buy us comfort. But I think after a certain point, we all need to realize that then is hardly any benefit of putting yourself through misery to earn money just so that you can buy maybe a fancier car. And so I think that I would like to have money when I grow up because obviously it is power in this world. But I would never want it at the cost of my happiness. Okay, like just now you mentioned, uh, Ruby, that all of us crave for luxurious lifestyle, branded clothes, um, a comfort, uh, you know, we all want these things and these are all materialistic desires, right? Now, how would you ensure that you do not get carried away by greed for money? Especially today's times, you know, when teenagers are so materialistic and they want to achieve success overnight and they want to get all these materialistic things. You're right. We've been brought up in a world where we have been taught that you need to work hard, you need to study well, and then you need to earn money in order to lead a comfortable life. But I think that um, even when we grow up, we need to make sure that we don't let this race and this pressure to earn more money get in the way of what we actually love. I think that if music, like music, mm. makes me happy, I think that, that I would always like to maintain that passion. and. Even if I feel like I, my dream is to become an author, and some would say that it's a very unstable career and it does not offer a very, um, it does not offer any guarantee for a successful career, but that makes me happy, and I think I would be very happy with being, um, with doing what I love in life. Uh, what is your topic? Now, today, I will be speaking on uh, a topic very close to my heart, music. Okay. Right, then, Riti, after he has spoken, you will ask him a question. Start. What can I say about music? Music, music, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for music. See, I am a, I, I would consider myself a musician. I've been playing the piano for seven or eight years. My brother, in fact, is also a musician. He is doing a degree in jazz. <laughs> and throughout my family history, at least one of, one in each generation has been a professional musician. So I guess music runs in my family, but I learn piano, I learn classical piano in particular, but I listen to all types of music because it is from, from New York to the Amazons to Mongolia, everywhere there is some sort of music. In fact, research has shown that in every society there are two things in common, language and music. Music is this universal language. So I. So I listen to all types, I'm from, from the 15th century, uh, Hayden and Bach, to the current generation rap and uh, pop. I listen to all of that. But, so, uh, music has actually, actually shown that if you listen to music, it actually helps in other areas of life. So if you listen to uh, a Mozart piece in your background, then you will do better in your studies. Uh, and in fact, there, there, uh, there's one band called Pink Floyd, a very famous band. Uh, they have made a song called Money. Okay. It's a very unique song. Um, so, music is actually a, a way of life. Um, one of my favorite composers, Frederick Chopin, the famous Polish yeah. composer, he died at the age of 33, which is actually very, very sad for the music world because his 
partly because I, I think that his works are one of the most beautiful that you can see in any in any genre of music. So uh, so I think what what happened is that he wrote down his feelings. He was a very sensitive person, so he wrote down all his feelings and tra transcribed it into notes and into paper. So when he died, I think all his works actually make up him, make up his art. And if you see Beethoven and Bach, all of them have done the same thing. And all of them are different, but then I wouldn't say that he is better than the other because they are all special in their own good. So that's why I think that that actually proves the point that all humans are different. All our souls are different all, and we are all unique and we are all beautiful. Your question to Sachin. Okay, as you said, that music um, always ends up helping us in other areas of life. So as a student, would you like to tell us maybe how um, music has affected your life and how it helps you deal with our problems today? As I mean, I, I said this in the first part as well. I, I perform music. I play. I, I really enjoy playing music. So this, my the stress that goes into, that comes out of studies, actually goes into the music and makes it more beautiful. I, I, can I say that? And um, listening to other, there are very inspirational songs. Like um, even even in the modern uh, Eminem, for example, he he has gone through a lot in his childhood. He was a very poor person. I mean, all he had was a dictionary, so his vocabulary is very rich. Okay. So, listening to his songs is actually very inspirational to the listeners because you actually get to know what he has gone through, yeah. and then you get to know that I can, I mean, I can get through what I am going through right now. Okay. All right. My question to you is that: Can you tell me one thing which you dislike about today's music? See, today's music. As many, many, many composers have put it, the art of songwriting is really tight. So, and I, I agree with you. You mean to say the lyric, the lyrics, the quality, the lyrics and the melody? Okay. Not, not, not completely tight. There are a few artists who carry on jazz and blues okay. and even classical comp compositions. So they're able to but, do it aesthetically. Yeah. As, uh, but compared to say electro dance music, okay. so electro dance music, it's respectable. Okay. I don't really like it because it's it's very repetitive. Yeah. It gets monotonous. Yeah. It's all it's very loud. Okay. There's so no melody. Personal. There's no melody. That's what I think. I mean, my brother would consider yeah. it not to be uh, described as music at all. At all. Okay. But then, yeah. all right. Have you ever thought of pursuing uh, music as your career? When you I am actually music? a very very scientific person. Okay. But then actually, I wouldn't mind going into music as well because music is also my passion yeah. it made me what I am yeah. but then again even science I remember when I was five yeah. four years old yeah. I remember telling myself I will be a scientist okay. and now I'm 15 years old so I, I'm, I, I keep telling myself I will be a scientist but then that part of me is also saying yeah. that why not also be a musician so I would I wouldn't mind being a musician as well okay. so that option is there in your yeah. mind okay. We start with the third task, which is a problem-solving task. I'll give you a card where your problem, the task is mentioned. Both of you can go through it, discuss, brainstorm the ideas and then present it. However, I'm going to read it for you. Alright, now see, oh, you know, these days children are very forgetful and they have a very laid-back, casual attitude. So your problem is somewhere, you know, it's more or less like that. Many of your classmates, they do not bring their books to class and disturb others during class. Now discuss with your partner why they behave in this way and what can be done to resolve the problem. You know, we always have this bunch of mischievous students and who do not take the instructions seriously. So how do you think these children should be dealt? so that they take the teacher's instructions seriously and bring the required books. Yes, what is it? Uh, so the first thing is the cause, so the root of the problem. So why a person is unattentive in class might actually originate from their home. The home environment, everything starts from home. If their parents aren't very, um, 
and they, they, they don't take active part in the child's studies mm -hmm. and in the child's interests mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. then maybe the child will feel very bored when he goes to school mm -hmm. and then the teacher teaches. Mm -hmm. So I think the home environment for, should first be changed. Um, the, also, yes. I think that the reason that the child is not paying attention is in class is because he's not enjoying the subject as much as the other children. So I think even if teachers made a little more effort to uh, make the class more interactive, so that the child is taking part and is forced to participate instead of interrupting it. And um, if the child is also, if we enable peer learning, then the child is also helping his peers. I think right? that's a good point yeah. she mentioned. Yeah. Peer learning would be really effective. Because sometimes children are reluctant and they have the inhibitions to, you know, discuss their own points with the teacher. That would be a good suggestion. What else is going to you? Um, one of, I mean, this this might be a little too much if there are people. If, if the teacher can go and take aside the student, and then understand his or her problem and then why he doesn't take interest in his studies. Maybe he can, uh, maybe she, the teacher, uh, maybe the teacher can change the class, mix, mix things up, like change the environment of the class to suit that boy and then hope that the others will also agree with it. Because you feel that can bring the change in the child's and, uh, behavior. We are, there, there are also, there's this also, uh, we can make a, a sort of buddy system where one mischievous boy, hmm. his friend would be able to stay with him and hmm. help him through his studies. Okay. So I think that that's related to peer learning hmm. as well. Yeah, that would aid peer learning. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Sajid. Thanks, Lili.